Question 5. Transition elements behave as catalysts and can form complex ions. The good example to use uh, as the example is the, the iron 3 ion reacts with the iodine. Itself get reduced to iron 2 and iodine spawn. After this iron 2 ion spawn, it will further react with the peroxodisulfate ion and is form back the iron 3. So the iron 3 will get back to the first step and uh, reacts again. So the iron 3 now is regenerate, so we say that it is a catalyst. Whenever uh, the uh, elements or ions, it can be regenerated after reaction, so that is a catalyst. Of course, we know that uh, most of the transition elements, they can form dative bonds with the ligand. For example, uh, if let's say now we have a cobalt ion, so it will form a uh, let's say uh, six dative bond with the water molecule. Uh, and of course, the overall charge, uh, let's say it, it will be uh, two positive, right? And of course, uh, the same thing will happen uh, for the reactions between the iron three and iodide. When the iron three and iodide reacts, also uh, the bondings will form, and eventually uh, it will go through the whole uh, reactions. So that's why for part A, explain why transition elements behave as catalysts. Then you need to explain these two because they have more than one stable oxidation state. For example, iron 3 and iron 2. So therefore, it can use as a catalyst for some reactions. And of course, we, uh, for these uh, transition uh, elements, they have empty D orbitals, which can form dative bonds with the ligand. For example, water or even uh, this uh, iodide or the halides. So because it can form dative bonds, so it can involve in the some of the reactions. So this is the two things uh, you must uh, explain. For this uh, part B, Silver form the linear complex. So this one is a silver ions with the two cyanide ions. And copper form tetrahedral complex. And this copper now is from four dative bonds with cyanide ions. Titanium form the complex with four chloride and two DIARS. This is a, a bidentate ligand. So you no need to know how it looks like uh, because it's not really asked for the structure. So it, you just need to know this one is a neutral by dentate ligand. So now we have a um, total six ligand. Means four chloride and these two by dentate ligand. Which means the total coordination number, it must be eight. Because four chloride from four dative bonds and two bidentate ligand is form the uh, four dative bonds as well because two times two. So four plus four, the coordination number now is eight. If you really want to know how it looks like, uh, is this is roughly how it looks like. Means the titanium is going to form four dative bonds with the Chloride and another two plus two dative bonds with the bidentate ligand. So the uh, this uh, um, structure we call dodecahedral, but but you no need to know this name. No need to know this name. So now for part one, state oxidation state of the coordination numbers of the titanium in this complex ion. So we know that this one, this bidentic ligand is neutral, so it's zero charge. Chloride is negative four. 
Therefore, titanium must be positive 4. And the coordination number I already told you just now. Okay, it's total 8 coordination number because it's from uh, 8 dative bonds. For part 2, draw the 3D diagrams to show the, sh the shapes of the this uh, silver and the copper uh, complex ion. So this one is linear. Linear actually uh, there is no 3D uh, diagrams because it's just linear. There is no uh, the ridge and dotted lines show. So what you need to do is just to uh, draw this one as usual, just a normal lines. So just make sure the bond angle between the ligand means the cyanide that means the C AG C bonding is 180 degree so this is a linear complex ion of course uh, with the charge negative here the overall charge negative and for the cop copper with the four cyanide ion uh, you need to draw tetrahedral structure like this two normal lines like this this one and you draw one dotted line shows that this cyanide is at the back and this wedge line shows that this cyanide is in front so this is the 3d drawing for tetrahedral of course the overall charge is uh, 3 negative and the bond angle means between the c cu and c is uh, uh, 109.5 degree because it's tetrahedral For C, the values for this uh, care step, um, uh, especially for this uh, complex ion, the copper with uh, four cyanide ion, so is uh, two times ten power of, uh, twenty-seven. Write the expressions for this uh, for the care step of this complex ion. Before you give the care step, at least you must know. Uh, the complex ion and its constituents ion means it's going to start from this copper with six water molecules or the ligand and after that you must know this one is actually copper positive means po just one positive because from here we know that um, the cyanide is a negative four and overall charge is negative, uh, 3 negative. So copper must be positive. And 4 cyanide involved, it substitutes all the H2O in the complex ion here. And it's form a new complex, this one. So therefore, the expression is the concentration of the complex ion, the copper 1 complex ion here, over the concentration of the copper with the six water ligand times the cyanide concentration of cyanide ion power four. Uh, this is important because this coefficient is four, so this one must power four. Uh, so this one is the expression for the these care steps. Part two. In the solutions, the concentration of cyanide and uh, this uh, complex ion, they are both 0 0.001 mole per dm cube. Use your expression in the part one to calculate the care step. So it's very easy. You just substitute uh, values given uh, because it's given 0 0.001, right? For this uh, the this uh, complex ion and you just substitute the care step here and the concentration of the the cyanide right power 4 so you get uh, this uh, value so it's 5 times 10 power negative 19 mole per dm cube for part d uh, this is a redox reaction which involved the copper ions so first, um, let's go through these steps. Right? 
0.567 gram of the alloy uh, means uh, in this alloy it has a certain amount of copper and this one is dissolved in the acid and this acid is 100 cm cube after that after this uh, alloy dissolves we just take 25 cm cube out put it in the conical flask and add the potassium iodide in there after that we titrate this mixture with the thiosulfate and we will know the volume of thiosulfate used which reacts with the uh, this uh, mixture so this is uh, the whole uh, reactions and uh, this is the reaction one reaction one basically is this part when we add the excess uh, potassium iodide so the copper two will be reduced to copper positive so iodide it will oxidize to iodine so this is the part so means uh, at this part you see the, the this uh, actually this is a white precipitate white precipitate and this is of course brown solution a brown color now the iodines that uh, released that all that form will titrate uh, with this thiosulfate means uh, this titration right so this one here right so the <clears throat> iodine uh, then uh, is titrate with 0 0.02 mole per dm cube uh, this thiosulfate and this is a reaction to the iodine that form here here so it's going to react with the thiosulfate and the iodines now reduce back to iodide and this one we will know so after that we will know the volume of thiosulfate used means uh, when all the iodines uh, has reacts with the thiosulfate so when it's end point means the brown color uh, is disappear normally for this titration we will use uh, some starch actually so when the blue black uh, disappear so we know that uh, iodine's uh, finished reacts now part one calculate the number of moles of iodine that reduce in this titration so this one is very easy uh, first we need to calculate the moles of the thiosulfates that use so just use MVO thousand 0 0.02 times the volume here this one over thousand so we get the mole of the thiosulfate and we know that uh, the iodine is actually uh, uh, half of the moles of thiosulfate because here the mole ratio is one to two so we know that the mole of iodine must be half of this mole so it's 2.01 times 10.84 after that uh, calculate the numbers of moles of copper in the original piece of alloy means uh, you're going to get the moles of copper in this 100 cm cube not not this so means you have to get the moles of the uh, the total almost of the copper in the this alloy okay means you have to get the most of copper in 250 sorry in 25 cm cube means use the most that you obtain in part one times two because the mole ratio here is uh, two to one so times two then here need to times four so because it's a hundred total hundred cm cube but we use 25 for titration so therefore we get 1.61 times 10 power of negative 3 after that calculate the percentage um, of copper in the alloy so we just use the mole that we obtain times the molar mass of the copper so we get 0 0.1021 so use this mass over the total mass used which is 0 0.567 times 
times 100%, we get 18%. So the percentage of copper in this alloy is 18%. For part four, suggest why a solution of copper two is color. Normally it's a pale blue color, but the solid uh, of this uh, CUI is white. CUI means uh, this copper is the copper positive. So then you have to use the uh, electron configuration to explain. Okay, let's say, let's say now they form uh, octahedral complex. This is just uh, uh, because we, we don't know uh, what is the, the, the actual so-called uh, the splitting. So whether it's octahedral, tetrahedral, let's say the DD splitting is octahedral. Now, copper 2 positive is uh, electron configuration is argon uh, 3D9. So it has a D9 configuration. So we know that uh, in D9 configuration uh, for the transition elements, once it's formed uh, the complex ion, the DD orbital will split to two sets. If octahedral, then it form this uh, the these two sets. If nine electrons in the d orbital in the three d nine, right? Nine nine electrons, so it look like this. And one of the d orbitals here is still able to get the electrons from lower energies level. Means when the uh, when the light pass through the solution. And the electron still can absorb the wavelength and get excited or get promoted to the higher energy level, means to get into this orbital. Means the absorption of light is still happen. So therefore, it will form some color because once the wavelength, one of the wavelength absorb, then we will see the complementary color. For the copper positive as you can see, the electron configuration is uh, argon 3d10. 3d10 in the d orbital, what we can see is all the d orbitals now, uh, is, uh, they are fully filled. So even though the light now is passed through the solution, or it passed through the complex ion, so the electrons, it cannot really uh, get excited and get into another d orbital which means means we know that there is no dd transition so what is dd transition means when the electrons is uh, uh what i call is changed from uh, or is excited from one d orbital to another d orbital so this we call dd transition so for copper 2 is it has the dd transition because one of the d orbital is still empty, but the copper plus no empty d orbital, so no dd transition. So this is what happened. This is what you need to explain. Okay, so first, copper two it has argon three d nine. Put the three d nine is better. Electronic configuration, which the d orbital is not full. Copper plus has the argon 3 D10 electron config, electronic configuration, which the D orbitals are full. Therefore, we know that DD transition in this copper positive ion is not possible. When no DD transition means no wavelength being absorbed, all the light will pass through, means no color will be observed. Okay, that's all. Thank you.